Well, it was a tremendous victory we saw this year, and you're right, it's the result of decades of hard work. And several years ago, leaders from West Texas came to me and then met with me in the Capitol and asked if I would lead the fight to try to get the Ports to Plains Highway authorized and move forward towards, towards constructing it. And, and I, I accepted that, that request and, and introduced legislation to do exactly that. I brought along with me Senator John Cornyn from Texas and, and also Senator Kevin Kramer from, from North Dakota and began working to build the coalition of both Republicans and Democrats it would take to move this forward in the Senate. Earlier this year when we had the infrastructure bill before the Senate, I had two major amendments I took the lead on, both focused on West Texas. One was the Cruz-Warnock Amendment. That was for I-14, which runs from the Permian Basin all the way out to the Atlantic Ocean. And, and that amendment, we got bipartisan support. It passed overwhelmingly. It passed unanimously, passed into law, helping bring oil and gas and crops all the, all the way east to the Atlantic Ocean. The second, the Ports to Plains, which, which will run from Laredo all the way north through Lubbock, all the way up into North Dakota and even Canada above that. Uh, we likewise got uh, bipartisan support for it. The amendment was the Cruz-Lujan Amendment, Lujan being the, the Democrat senator from New Mexico. And we had agreement to move forward on that until at the last minute on the infrastructure bill, there was an unrelated dispute between Bernie Sanders, a Democrat, and Richard Shelby, a Republican. That unrelated dispute stopped all of the amendments. But the good news, Ryan, is the agreement that we had built on Cruz Lujan, the fact that we had gotten both sides to sign off, that we'd brought on Democrats and Republicans, enabled us to get, get it passed in a subsequent bill shortly thereafter. The long and short of it is we did the hard work to bring together Democrats and Republicans, and we're, we now have designated I-27, the ports to Plains, to run from Laredo all the way north through Lubbock, all the way up to Canada. That is going to bring jobs, $55 billion project. You're talking hundreds of thousands of jobs. You're talking tens of billions of dollars of additional GDP to the state of Texas. And, and it's a great bipartisan victory for the state of Texas. It's the kind of local impacting bipartisan bill that, that we don't see often uh, from the, the U.S. Senate especially, but that's exactly the kind of legislation we like to talk about. I will ask you, though, um, you, you were in Lubbock last week, I believe, at announcing this. Um, we, we, we had some, some questions for our community as to why you had voted against the appropriations bill that actually gave this designation. Why shepherd this uh, federal highway designation through the process and then end up voting against the actual legislation that, that put it into law? Well, listen, that happens frequently in the United States Senate where you end up working to get agreement and to pass a particular piece of legislation, but then it gets rolled into a giant bill that has a whole bunch of good things and bad things. And for a decade now, that there have been dozens of different pieces of legislation that I wrote that I got support for, that I got passed into law, but the ultimate vehicle that they got stuck into had other elements that were bad and wasteful and didn't make sense, so that I vote against the giant mess of a bill, but at the same time enact the legislative victory that's focused on jobs in the state of Texas. And th the reason for that is simple. My priority is jobs, and, and I can tell you on the infrastructure bill, I was very directly focused on West Texas, which is why we had two big victories for West Texas, I-14 and I-27, both enacted into law. That infrastructure bill, I do want to ask you about that, too, because when we look at its impact for Texas, it's giving $35 billion to the state of Texas, 26 of which is for federal highway projects, $100 million for broadband, $53 million for wildfire prevention. We love all of those things, especially here in West Texas. That was also a no vote for you, though. What, what were your yep. concerns on, on the broader infrastructure bill, even with, with all of the benefits that it seemingly gives for us here in West Texas? Look, it's, it's really simple, which is Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi have been spending wildly and irresponsibly. They've spent trillions of dollars. We've racked up trillions in new debt. We're printing money we don't have. 
and the raging inflation that we're seeing in Lubbock and across West Texas and across the state and across the country is the direct result of Democrats spending trillions of dollars we don't have. The reason why the cost of food has skyrocketed, the cost of rent has skyrocketed, the cost of lumber has skyrocketed, the cost of electricity and healthcare and everything we spend money on, and especially the cost of gasoline has more than doubled in just a year and a half under Joe Biden. And it's the, the wantonly irresponsible spending from the Democrats, trillions and trillions of dollars. And you know, it's interesting you focused on hard infrastructure, things like roads and bridges. A very small percentage of that so-called infrastructure bill was actually roads and bridges. I emphatically support roads and bridges and indeed was leading the fight to bring roads and bridges to Texas and West Texas in particular. But what the Democrats do, because everybody likes roads and bridges, they sell that small portion of the bill and they cram the bill through all sorts of unrelated spending that is paying off left-wing special interest. And if you don't like the inflation you're paying when you fill up your tank, it is because the Democrats cannot exercise fiscal restraint and their answer is spend trillions and trillions more and, and, and that is hurting working Americans all across the state of Texas. The bill did spend a lot of money, Senator, yes. But when we look at these projects like I-27, these big projects cost big money. Uh, you know, how is this uh, going to be funded in the future? Because from my understanding, this uh, with Interstate 27, let's, let's talk specifically on this now, this is just the, the designation uh, in, in letters, right? It doesn't come with any kind of funding. How is that going, how is that process going to move forward in order to make sure that we can actually, you know, pay for, for the shovels hitting the ground? Well, sure, and that's going to be an ongoing battle in, in the United States Senate, in the United States House, and, and I will continue leading the fight to get, get this freeway built, to get both of these freeways built, because I think it is incredibly important to invest where there is need. Listen, when it comes to hard infrastructure, when, when we took up the so-called infrastructure bill, I, I went to the Senate floor and argued, let's take up a bill focused on roads and bridges and actual infrastructure, the stuff that is popular that you claim this bill is about, but it's only a tiny fraction of it. If we'd taken up just roads and bridges, we could have had, passed it with massive bipartisan support. We could have gotten over 90 senators in support of it, but the Democrats didn't want to do it because they had a hard partisan agenda. And by the way, part of their partisan agenda is hammering oil and gas production in the state of Texas. And we've seen for a year and a half, the Green New Deal radicals putting new taxes, new regulations in place. You look at the most recent, recent bill, the, the Inflation Explosion Act is, is what I call it, because in the face of explosion, they're spending hundreds of billions more. And among other things, people are ticked off at the high price of gas. What did the Democrats do in the Inflation Explosion Act? They put billions of dollars of new taxes on oil and gas made in the state of Texas. That is hurting the people of Texas, but it's, but it's hurting consumers. Every time you fill up your truck or minivan, you're seeing the consequences of this. And, and so my view, there are priorities the federal government should spend money on, and infrastructure is clearly one of them. That investment should follow need. That means it should go where the population is and where the traffic is. And when you look at West Texas, between the oil and gas being produced in the Permian Basin, be between all of the incredible crops and cattle and, and cotton being grown in, in West Texas, the commerce, it is clear that the infrastructure should follow where those jobs are, where the goods and services are. But we ought to focus directly on the priorities rather than empowering big government Democrats to just spend money we don't have.